the city of Seattle, known for coffee, grunge music, and of course, rain. And we're definitely going to get a heavy dose of the last of those three here tonight as you look inside a wet and wild Century Link field. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football. So are we as the Seahawks get set to match up. Well, the Cardinals getting set to go here. Uh, you know, a lot of folks this time of the year, Charles, they like to look around the NFL landscape, try to identify that sleeper team that's ready to make that next step. And there's a lot of people who are landing on the Arizona Cardinals to be in that conversation. Yeah, I'm not sure they're the sleeper team anymore. To me, they are woke right everybody's talking about them so they've got to go out and play to that level now and they have a chance because i thought they got better last year i didn't care what the record was but the rookie kyler murray at quarterback he spent this entire offseason reshaping his body and getting better he's gonna throw to deandre hopkins who they acquired from houston larry fitzgerald the old pro who's still around and Kenyon drake and they acquired him last year from miami boy did he run the football well but if they're going to really, truly contend in the NFC West, they've got to get better on defense. That means they've got to complement what Chandler Jones brings off the edge. And they started by drafting Isaiah Simmons out of Clemson. And Buda Baker on that defense. Now the highest paid safety in the NFL with a contract that he signed back on August 24th. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. And there's the beauty of Kyler Murray because we all know he can get it done through the air. Terrific right arm, and nowadays we don't even talk about his height anymore. He's shown that he can see downfield and make throws, but he also possesses wide receiver speed. He can call his own number or scramble and turn it into a big play as well. Kyler Murray, a dual threat at the quarterback position. Tackle made by Rasheem Green. Kenyon Drake in week 16 last year against the Seahawks. Had a career day, 166 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns as well as the Cardinals won in Seattle 27-13. On second down, it's Drake. He'll get three up to midfield. Drake. Well, Kenyon Drake last year versus Cleveland, absolutely unstoppable. Ran for 137 yards. Remember, four touchdowns in the Cards' 38-24 win in Week 15. And defensively going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. Here's Murray from midfield. Eluding the pressure right. He may try and run for this. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Here's the veteran punter Lee as he sends this one away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And it'll be Seahawk football as they take over deep in their own territory. Well, the Seahawks going to work here once again offensively. Uh, you look back to last year, Charles, 11-5, the final tally. They got a playoff win in Philly before falling in Green Bay. And, and look, we've sat here and talked about this team year after year. Could this be the year that they fall off? And every year, they seem to go out and make the playoffs. So I guess I ask you yet again, CD, could this be the year that they fall off? Well, it certainly could, but I don't believe it will be because this is a franchise that knows how to continue to upgrade their roster. Witness Jamal Adams coming in from the Jets in a big-time trade. They gave up two first-round picks for him, but in their style of defense, that safety is so important, and Jamal Adams may be the best in the game. So this is a team that always is thinking about winning and winning big. Jamal Adams represents that, and oh yeah, on the other side of the ball, they got a quarterback by the name of Russell Wilson, who keeps you in each and every game. What was their record last year in, in, eight, in, in games decided by eight points or less? I think they were 10 and 2. 10 and 2. Yeah, 10 and 2. Think about that. So 11 and 5. 
You know, they could become 3-13, and 13, but I don't think that would happen. I don't see that happening at all. It's a very mentally tough, aware team that likes to compete, and they're always going to be in the thick of a race. And 10 at the 26-yard line. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. And he powers his way up past the 30. Five yards on the carry there, and it leaves him with third and about six yards to go. Third. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. On third down, Wilson. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. On fourth down, ready to punt Michael Dixon. Deep for the Cardinals, Christian Kirk. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. The receiver, the ball Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Yard line. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion, and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. From the 38, Murray. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Out of the gun, here's Murray. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. And there's Kyler Murray being sacked. And in his first year in the league, surprising to a lot of people, he was the most sacked quarterback, went down 48 times. And when you think about the mobility that he possesses, that really does surprise people because they think they can get out of everything. But so often, those young guys who can move around a lot, they keep plays alive so long that sometimes they actually get trapped. Defense is going to test him and continue to test him. I think he's got something for them as he continues to move forward. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of six there on first. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets them a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. This is caught. It's Greg Olson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. Greg Olson was a big-time pickup for the Seattle Seahawks in the offseason. Spent the last nine seasons with Carolina as an all-pro, pro-bowl tight end. 
and did the same thing before that with the Chicago Bears. Now he moves to the Northwest and gives Russell Wilson a big time target in the middle of the field. So that'll back him up five. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Now it's Carson. And he'll get it down here to the 43. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make this second very manageable. Yeah, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it. You can throw it. You keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase. Stand ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. And now he'll tuck it and run. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. Now a give right side. Carson, that is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? The tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Throwing again, Murray, he'll run it. He'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Throwing is Murray on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. This offense has definitely been slow getting out of the gate. It's almost like they missed their wake-up call for this one. No points on their first two possessions. And now it's looking like none on this one either. Here's Andy Lee now. He's on to punt for Arizona. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. We sort of suspected that the elements might wreak havoc on both of these offenses, and that's been the case. No points on either side as this drive begins with a first down. Now it's Wilson. And his pass incomplete. Wilson's pass thrown away and incomplete. Coverage by Byron Murphy. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. This is Carson. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and six. 
The card's going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. From the shotgun, Wilson. And able to find Dorsett. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. One thing about the Seattle Seahawks offense, they are a run-first group, but when they throw the ball, they want to throw it downfield and sting defenses. And Philip Dorsett provides great speed and a good target downfield in order to get that done. Nice catch there. His speed adds an extra dimension to the Seahawks offense. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and 10, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Second and eight. Wilson now off the bootleg. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. No score after one on EA Sports. So they recover their own fumble. Now they face third and short. Here's Carson. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Chris Carson has proven to be a workhorse for the Seattle Seahawks, and they continue to expand his game. We know that he can run inside and be a bruising type of a player, but he has surprising speed to the perimeter, and they've expanded his game now by throwing it to him out of the backfield. In 2019, in the top 10 in the league in touches and yards from scrimmage. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. At the three yard line. But this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in and picks up the first down. First and goal from the three. They'll try to run with Carson. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Good first step there defensively, but they're still knocking on the doorstep, so maybe another run here? I think so. One of my favorite coaches used to say, son, if you could darn near lay down near the end zone and get in, give me my best power running play with my best back right now. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And when the smaller guy can't power it across the goal line, Charles, sometimes you need to go with a fullback. They did. It worked. What's that thing about force and mass? How's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Force equals mass times acceleration. Oh, that's big time stuff. That's, that's from the same guy with the apple dropped on his head, right? <laughs> the point after threw the raindrops up and good. And it's now a 7 nothing game. Turn Andy Isabella. And a decent return out to the 27 yard line. The football going back over to Arizona now. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. They'll start the drive with Drake. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Well, there's someone who's running the football with a big smile on his face, and that's Kenyon Drake, because you remember last year he was in Miami, wasn't getting many carries, not a lot of success, but in midseason, ended up in Arizona and became a huge weapon for the Cardinals. Eight touchdowns the second half of the season, utilized really well big time skilled player who can run it and catch it out of the backfield he has finally found a home and a place for his talents at the 50 the last few seasons has almost been sport for us in the media to see if larry fitzgerald was going to call it quits and cap off what i believe is a hall of fame career but now he's entered season number 17 second on the all-time receptions list just 171 catches behind Jerry Rice and maybe he's found new life as he continues to pile up the big numbers a gain of a yard pretty good job defensively thought he was going to get it but they knew where that marker was and they stopped him just short of it what it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side is it defense understanding as you noted where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there and he hits Drake. By the skin of their teeth, they are able to convert on third and inches. Short yardage situation, you have to wonder if they thought that they were just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield, trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. First down, Murray. He goes underneath to Drake. The first nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Running from the shotgun with Drake. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. <laughs> now Murray throwing on second down. And this one is incomplete. Intended for I'm looking at this with my defensive eyeglasses on because you remember the old days when a tight end saw a linebacker covering him and thought he had a mismatch? But the way they can run nowadays, not necessarily so. They gave it a shot downfield. That one incomplete. The Cardinals on third down. Two for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. They'll set up the screen to Drake. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. I know you've got a baseball background, right? A little bit. Started yeah. minor league ball. Yeah, you did some of that, right? What do they do when they do the signals and indicate it, right? It Coach, starts... Whether it, it goes or not, yeah. Yeah, whether the play's on or not. How about the indicators offensive linemen give when they're getting ready to run a screen pass? And if those get red, <laughs> well, we just saw that there, didn't we? No game. No game. Deciphered it and finished the playoff. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. Seven to nothing leads. They don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, but it's going to be second down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have any options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. To throw again, Wilson. And his throw is incomplete. The intended receiver was D.K. Metcalf. Third down here. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. 
And now the third down throw incomplete as well. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. You know, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. Well, the mental focus. Yeah, the that's true. Gotta stay with it. That's true. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. It hasn't gone particularly well for them, that's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. At the 47-yard line. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Murray a give, this is Drake. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Murray now on first down. He's going to take off with it. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. I think we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. On the give, this is Drake. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Now on first down, Drake again. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. The ball carrier. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. From the 35 on second down, Murray. And now he's going to use his legs. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the gun, it's Drake. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Throwing on second and eight, Murray. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. DeAndre Hopkins, the pro bowler, the intended receiver. But now it's third down. And that would off the mark behind him. Incomplete. Yards to go. The Cardinals on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Murray. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And DeAndre Hopkins with another catch. And let's face it, when Arizona made this trade, there had to be no one happier than quarterback Kyler Murray, who had been pushing his management to draft his college teammate, C.D. Lamb, out of Oklahoma. 
But when they made the trade for DeAndre Hopkins, they didn't need to do that anymore. This guy's an all-pro receiver. He's been the top three receptions the last two seasons. And now with Larry Fitzgerald already there, and you add DeAndre Hopkins, the possibilities, endless for the Arizona Cardinals in the passing game. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Murray to air it out again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target, but now it's third and goal. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you kind of run out of your running plays, fire another one into the end zone. And Hopkins has got it. Touchdown, Arizona. Complete to number 10. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Cardinals are just an extra point away from tying this game. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. Game at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. From the six. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll buy some time right. Now he'll pull it down. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And this is recovered by the Cardinals. that fumble recovery it's Murray Murray's pass well, that tight end position it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL yeah you're getting really terrific athletes a lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point they continue to give you speed great hands and big bodies which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Fighting through, and he's got space. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Seahawks' 28. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Nine yards. First down, Arizona. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, Murray. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. I'll tell you, as a defender, you've got to make life as difficult as possible when you're trying to cover a big tight end because you know his catch radius is huge. He's unable to pull that one in, though. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Throwing again, Murray. Stepping up, he'll try and run. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. It's a gain of two yards, and it's third down. Yeah. 
It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Operating from the gun, Murray. It's complete to Hopkins. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 14. A Cardinal first down, Murray to Hopkins. Well, even I can figure out that DeAndre Hopkins is clearly one of the best receivers in the game. Over the last three seasons, over 1,100 yards in each season. And don't forget, defenses have been keying on him each and every snap. This guy produces no matter what the situation, no matter what the coverage, just find him and get him the football. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. From the six now on second and three. From the gun, Murray. It's complete to Drake. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Operating from the gun, Murray. He can run for it, and he will. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. Now, that's disappointing for the defense. They had the advantage, had excellent coverage all over the field, but they let him get away, scramble, and pick up a first down and inside the five-yard line. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. He was looking for Daniels that time, but it'll be second and goal. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. Being, and he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. Kyler Murray in the final seconds of the first half. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. Yes, indeed. Touchdown, Kyler Murray. You remember as a rookie, four rushing touchdowns. But he's one of those players who's not just quick, but awfully fast. Had 12 rushing touchdowns at Oklahoma during his Heisman Trophy winning season in 2018. Expect him to expand on using his legs in the future. Gonzalez is able to tack on the PAT, and that makes the score 14 to 7. So six seconds, all that remains of this first half as the kick is away. A fairly short kick from the 14. Well, a dangerous return man showing it here. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. He's gonna air it out for Dorsett. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. 
The Seahawks take the Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. It'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. On second down now, it's Carson. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. He starts by handing this off to Drake. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Kenyon Drake. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. At the 35 yard Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it. That's when the great ones know that they have the goods. From the 35 on second down, Murray. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. A nice catch there by Christian Kirk. Had 709 yards and three touchdowns in the 2019 season. I expect those numbers to continue to climb. This is a guy who can play in the slot, play outside, but the number one thing about him, absolute explosiveness, especially after he catches the ball downfield. If you don't make the tackle right there, he's going to take it a long way. Bobby Wagner, the NFL's leading tackler in 2019, there on the stop. It's second and A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. That's complete to Williams out of the backfield. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play even though it was complete and those two just haven't been in sync thus far they've done a nice job against him but still with his talent you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game here's Andy Lee now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night and he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. 
At their own Seattle again yard. getting ready to take over offensively. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Three yards remain for second down. They run it with Carson, and this one will go to the 28-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Right back to him on first down. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Corey Peters there to bring him down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. He'll try and run it. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. A gain of nine brings up third and one. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. That'll go as a punt of 34 yards that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. To throw again. Murray. Flush to his right. And yeah, he's going to keep it here. Good coverage downfield led to him taking off, picking up the first down on a 13-yard run. First down, Arizona. First down, Drake, and very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. From the 44, Murray. Open man is Kirk, complete. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. A gain of eight yards, and it's third down. Murray to throw on third and one. 
And that will be incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Here's Andy Lee now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. And out now come the Seahawks. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. The ball resting on the 20. Here's second and six. From the gun, it's Wilson. Forced out to his left. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. On the play, brings up third and four. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. Oh, the return is Kirk. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. So out now come the Cardinals. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. The ball carrier. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains. That means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. From just shy of midfield, Murray. He's got it to Williams. Murray's that bad. throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. From the gun on third down, Murray out to his left. He may try and run for this. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the red zone, here's the Heisman Trophy winner, Murray. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back to the 24. L.J. Collier credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. 
Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. If you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Well, there's times when you see these catches that are made, and we just know the guys playing it are really wishing for college rules. Only need that one, one foot, foot down instead of two. It's awfully difficult on the sideline, isn't it? An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, here's Murray. Just what Seattle was hoping for. The coverage holds, and now fourth down. And this is too far behind his man. He missed him. It's incomplete. On fourth down, here's Zane Gonzalez for the Cardinal field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. Gonzalez's kick is good, and they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to the goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. From the 10. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. Intended that was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. And we sit in quarter number three out in Seattle. A second and ten now. Throwing again. Wilson. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Jordan Phillips, he's the culprit, dropping him for a two-yard loss. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Seahawks on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third down and 12. From the shotgun, Wilson. This complete to Lockett. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. He got out of bounds. That's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play call, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. No return, but it goes down as just a punt of 31 yards. And the Cards will take over first and 10. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 right at the 30. Now a handoff for Drake. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. 
offensively with the lead you want to run the ball keep the clock going but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too right so how do you do that and not come back on your heels now think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock 15 yards on the play first down Again, a great time there to come up with his longest run of the night. We just saw it. Leads to a lot of satisfaction because if they're able to hang on and win this game, you know what else will happen in the locker room after this? What's that? Head coaches step up and go, great job, guys. Because of that, come in a little bit later tomorrow. Murray's throw on target to Christian Kirk. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, Wilson. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Incomplete. He started out having some troubles back in the first half connecting with his receivers. Really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Yeah, he's at less than 50%, and you and I both know that just won't do. So I would think about spreading things out, putting it on the receivers, make them win those one-on-one -on -one battles on the perimeter and find their way open. Again on second and 10, it's Wilson. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? The Seahawks on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and ten. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. Oh, he can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. They're down two scores, and they need a quick one to try and get back into this one. That was one way to try and get it done. Unsuccessful in the attempt, but they have no choice but to keep trying. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. The football going back over to Arizona now. They've got a chance now to put this game away following that last defensive stop and punt. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Jaron Reed muscles his way in for the sack. And for the defense, their third sack of the game. That number tells you that they're starting to put it together with their defensive game plan. They're starting to feel pretty good about what the offense is doing, bringing the pressure at the right time, and putting the quarterback on the ground. On second down, it's Drake. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. He was close to flirting with that sideline, but able to stay in bounds like you know his coach wants him to do and keep that clock moving. Isn't it funny that we're watching this play when we had that discussion just yesterday about this? What do you do in this scenario? What do you, you know, what's your mindset? It appeared to me that he'd totally forgotten that he needed to stay in bounds. And then the last says, oh no, I better, I better get down. And he ended up doing the right thing. But at that point, maybe close to letting it slip away. That goes for 14 yards, first down Cardinals. Murray going to run play action with Drake and look to throw it. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Vincent Mayoa able to get him for a loss of about three. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. 
Now a draw play with Drake. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind a line of scrimmage. Third and 15 coming up after that loss of two. Well, they went back to him, but the results were similar, so I highly doubt that he'll get another opportunity here on third and long. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Operating from the gun, Murray. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they'll bring him down right at midfield, and he is well short of the first down. But in so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Here's the veteran punter, Lee, as he sends this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. One yard seems pretty obvious defensively. A key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. 12 yards there and a first down. Good game by Chris Carson. Picks up a first down, and you just have to love his running style. Talk about a straight-ahead guy, no-nonsense type of a runner. He's averaged 82 yards a game over the last two seasons and had 1,230 yards on the ground in 2019. A throw complete to Dorsett, and he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. He's going to take off with it. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. Normally we're talking about quarterback duel where they're matching each other pass for pass. How about the footwork in this with both of these guys running the ball well? Yeah, they mixed in the run game. You're exactly right. Now, both coaches might not like how much their quarterbacks have taken off, but another example right there of just good mobility. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 33. 25 yards there on the catch and run. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. This throw complete, Wilson finding Lockett. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. It's always interesting when you get ready for a Seattle Seahawks game because when you think of their receivers, you think of these guys going to be 6'3", 6'4", 225 pounds out on the perimeter. But Tyler Lockett, he shatters all of those thoughts. Much more like a water bug, but maybe their most trusted target downfield. Led Seattle with 1,057 yards last season, operates in the slot and outside, and as tough as any receiver in the NFL. It's a first down on a gain of 10. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Wilson connects with Tyler Lockett. And the Seahawks have made this a one-score game. Just a great individual effort there to take that pop pass and scamper off into the end zone. And that's why offenses love that play, partner, because that gives them a chance to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers with a full head of steam behind them. It's often like a track relay. Legs two, three, and four. That first guy steaming ahead, and he just hands it to you, and you get a chance to take off and go before you even get the baton. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. On the return, Isabella. And they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Murray and the Cardinals with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. No gain on the play there. Second down. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because they're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And able to find Kirk complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as a tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 39. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. They stay on the ground with Drake. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. to get 
it to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. To throw is Murray. And this is going to be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. A 52-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. So Wilson and the Seahawks down 17-14, a minute 46 to go. And they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Now Wilson. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Jordan Phillips in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. How about Jordan Phillips there breaking through for the sack? And that's exactly why Arizona acquired him to anchor their defensive line. Very stout against the run. Can take on double teams, but he can also split them, get upfield, and get into the offense's backfield, as we just saw there. Now the second down throw on target, and he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And it drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Two-minute drills, they're tough enough, pressure-packed enough, and these elements makes it significantly tougher. And you don't have the margin where you can say, okay, I can allow for certain things and maybe change up a little bit. Because it's a two-minute situation, you've got to try and make the same plays you would make if the elements didn't exist. They're going on fourth down. It's Wilson. He can run for it, and he will. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it'll be a turnover on downs. Everyone gears up for third down, talks about the importance of it. But fourth down, that's truly the moment of truth play, isn't it? Everything's dialed up a little bit more. And, it, you know, it's such a momentum play, isn't it? Absolutely, because it can flip either way, depending on who converts on fourth down. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. Down to a knee. Here's the Cardinals look to let the clock roll. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. Down to an goes Murray as that will just about wrap this thing up. So it's a win here for the Arizona Cardinals. And I tell you, these division games never for the faint of heart, but they come through with a tight victory here on the road. And you find yourself working harder in a game like this too, don't you? Yeah, because you got to stay sweat. with it, right? You got to stay with it. You got to stay locked in. It's our type of a game. And you just mentioned it. Division game on the road, tight. And they find a way to win it. Way to hunker down, as my old coach used to say, and find your way through. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Seattle.